Wish I'm then. Wasn't right. <laughs> that was weird. Okay. Strange things have happened. Shouldn't tap the screen like that, apparently. Okay, welcome to my daily broadcast. Hi. <laughs> This is episode number 624. The topic today is after Valentine's Day, it is Singles Self-Appreciation Day. And I'll introduce myself first before I get into that. So my name is Barry, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help women and some men create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And every day now for over two years, basically, I've been doing these talks called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart as most of my audience are women, although some men are getting the message, which is good. And so today's talk is for the single people. Um, in fact, most of the week's talks this week have been about single people. Yesterday was, sorry, let me repeat the title again, episode 624 of Messages for the Mass and Power Your Feminine Heart. And the topic today is after Valentine's Day, this is Singles Self-Appreciation Day. And self-appreciation is the key in this, by the way. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So I said, I've been doing some talks this week about Valentine's Day, which was yesterday, in case you're wondering which day of the week this is on. And I talked yesterday about, well, I've just talked a few times about the challenges of Valentine's Day for those people who are single, meaning the challenges of all the marketing, judgment, labeling, comparison type stuff that happens on Valentine's Day. So I thought, well, since Valentine's Day was yesterday, and I did call yesterday the Singles um, Awareness Day and Love Appreciation Day is what I called it, I think. It sounds about right. But I read somewhere apparently that officially, somewhere it's official, today is Singles Appreciation Day or Singles Self-Appreciation Day. I'm choosing to call it Singles Self-Appreciation Day for a very specific reason. And I should tell you that reason, shouldn't I? Um, simply put, well, let me recap slightly. I did talk about the preparation for Valentine's Day if you're single. So I did give some people some warning ahead of time about how to be more um, self-supportive, self-loving, self-caring when during that challenging time when everyone's supposed to be in a relationship and romancing and maybe they're desperate to attract love. That's all done now because we're past Valentine's Day. <laughs> but I want to make this point about self-appreciation because we could all do more of it, to be very simple about it. I'm, I watch so many people out there who seem to have it all together, but I can tell by the way they carry themselves, the way they communicate, and the way they present themselves, that they don't appreciate who they are. They may act like their ego's tough and they're strong, but the reality is they're missing a whole chunk of things that they could be doing for themselves, which is basically another heading of self-appreciation. So let me break this down. The people who I think have it worked out most effectively in this world are those who care about who they are. Not the position they have, not the authority they bring, not the ego they run, but who they are. And there's a big difference between the two. The wiring we're trained in this culture to have is one of got to be top of the heap, got to win, got to be above all others, others and get to the top no matter how, no matter what. And a lot of people have done that and then discovered that their life is missing something because the, the wiring is such that we have to keep going for the goal, the goal, the goal, and there's no there there. And for a lot of people who are single, that's running in the wiring about relationships. In fact, there are a lot of people I know who've been into, got into a relationship and then felt disillusioned because what they attracted, what they had, didn't match the belief they had about what it should be when they get there. And this is one of the challenges of doing the work where we think we have to keep going for striving new, new goals, new missions, new achievements. And I see a lot of people who are driven by this mission although it's not really the mission because I know better than that, but by an apparent goal to achieve something. Oftentimes it's a financial one. I'm not sure why I'm going down this path, but I guess I'm coming back to the topic at hand. But by going down this path and achieving the money, what they realize after a period of time, after achieving certain levels and milestones for success, that it feels kind of hollow. And all of this comes back to self-appreciation. Yes, it does. So I'm just, I ran off on a topic and I realized I was going off track, but I want to come back to this. So self-appreciation is where it's at in a simple term, meaning that the biggest lesson I keep getting more and more for myself and for everybody else is that we have more room to love ourselves and care about ourselves and appreciate who we are. Um, a friend of mine posted earlier today a, a question like, um, the question was, why are you here? Yeah, why are you here? Yes, that was the title of the question. And there's been a lot of provocative answers on there, a lot of interesting uh, responses to that question. 
So I'm going to ask you the question to consider for yourselves is why are you here? Because if you're not here to express more love, actually, no, let me back that up. I'm, I'm jumping ahead into a more spiritual conversation. Let me back up a bit further. So asking the question why you're here, for most people, there may be this belief that they are here to um, get married, raise a family, or to earn a million dollars, or start a new company, or to something along those lines. And to be honest, I think anybody who, say, anybody who says that is thinking too small. Yes, too small. I firmly believe that for what we're here for as human beings on this planet, especially at this time of the um, existence, is to bring more loving into the world, to bring more compassion into the world, bring more caring into the world, because it's very clear that what really moves people in a positive way are those expressions, being loving, more caring, more compassionate, more kind. And the challenge with this is people think, oh, we're going to go do that because they're driven by the doingness versus the beingness. And that doing is, pr is provoking and pushing this goal line out, out into the world. But you can't do it that way. Bringing compassion, kindness, and caring to the world can only effectively come when we do it to ourselves first, or give it to ourselves first, excuse me. When we embody and give ourselves the loving, the kindness, the compassion, and the care first, then we can bring it to the world in a way that is conducive, uh, sorry, that is um, like condu yeah, well, conducive, yes, but it's aligned and it's an integrity. And it is something that we can give from an overflow because when we tap in to give it to ourselves, we actually open up a, a fountain of abundance of this energy that comes forward. And the more caring, compassionate, and kind we are with ourselves, the more capable we are doing it for other people. We can share our gifts, our kindness, our service, our compassion for other people effortlessly because we have that resource inside now for ourselves. There are people out there, and I did this myself, where I'd be so busy giving for other people, I would get burnt out. And so I'd be giving and giving and giving, then I start being coming begrudging about it. I start feeling less able to give because I was draining myself out from the first way. And when I reflect it back on myself, which is what the lesson I'm offering you to you too, is there's a shift from a place of attempting to justify something out of the world to bringing the love inside first. And again, loving ourselves first, can be caring for ourselves first, being self-appreciating first makes us more effective in the world and gives, and gives us a resource to come from to share in the world as well. And the side benefit of that, if you're single, is it can also help you attract a relationship. And I'll get to that in a second. So a little, little, little uh, teaser for you. So my, hey Huntley, good to see you, sir. Uh, oh, by the way, this is a Facebook Live first going onto YouTube. So if you want to go and talking to, you won't see them on YouTube because they're, they're watching my Facebook Live. And I do, res I do res appreciate comments and, and input and thoughts on both sides. So if you're commenting on Facebook Live or on my YouTube, check the YouTube version, you're welcome. And I appreciate that. Rewind slightly. So the, the energy of compassion, caring, and kindness starts from, with, from within. So it must, and I say this must, it can only function effectively from self-filled up first, self-fueled. There's... Um, I'm just thinking there's a couple of different things I'm pulling into which seem to fit. That doesn't really work. Okay, so let me try. So I'm just sitting with some, some um, teaching um, lessons I learned years ago. Let me see if they fit now. And they don't really fit necessarily. I'll put it this way. I'll, so I'll just set it down to this. It's very hard to fill somebody else's cup up when your, when your cup is empty. I'm thinking it's a Bruce Lee quote, but I think I'm misquoting him, but this is the thing I want to make sure you get this point clearly, which is this, again, is, it, is to help other people feel better by loving them, being kind and compassionate to them, can only work when you're doing it for yourself. Yes, and in some ways, and I've heard this before too, that sometimes by giving and sharing the love out there, you fill up your own tanks. But it, for most people, they don't do it that way. It's black and white, it's one or the other. And when they're filling up other people, they're actually draining their own tanks at the same time. So the power I'm talking about here is when you do so, really reflect back on yourself, look in the mirror and actually uh, care about who the person is looking in the mirror, then you bring a level of kindness, compassion, and caring to other people that is sourced from your own abundant resources. Because when you're tapped in, you're tapped in. 
And from this place of connection to yourself and who you really are, your kindness and compassion and caring can flow out effortlessly and endlessly because it's tapped into an infinite source. It's when we think as humans we can make it happen by pushing out the love and the kindness and compassion where it's just it's limited and becomes draining of ourselves because we are not the source of it. We're the conduit for it, which is very different. So I didn't know I was going to go that direction with this talk, but anyway. So the self-appreciation I'm talking about here, for, especially for the single people, because we are less distracted by a partner if we're single. That's one reason I'm doing it that way. Um, I've got to thought about, okay, I'll come back to that in a minute. So being in that place of being single, we can be single focused, which is to turn the um, focus on ourselves, to love ourselves more. And again, the more we do love and appreciate and care about ourselves, the more attractive we, come for, tr attractive we become for relationship, which is another lesson, by the way. Because the second part of that is that when you fill up your own tanks, you don't need a relationship to make you feel better. Two big lessons right there. All right, that piece back on the table. So Valentine's Day, yesterday. My encouragement I've been giving out if you've been watching my broadcast the last few days is that if, you're, if, you was, if you are single and you were single yesterday on Valentine's Day, things could change by today, who knows, that you did something that was of self-care focus, self-care um, intention. I mentioned yesterday actually, that when I finished my broadcast, I'd, I'd chosen to go out and take, actually have a date with myself. I went out and had dinner and went to see a movie, which was a lot of fun. And it was kind of nice just to relax into that space of being in my own company and enjoying it. Not needing anybody else, not needing anything. You know, my, my phone was in my, in my pocket and didn't even bother looking. Well, during the movie, didn't even look at it because I was focused on the movie. But that simple act, which I recommend doing, if you're single, I recommend doing this at least once a week, if not more often, is take yourself out on a date. Go out and do something nice for yourself, which could be catching a movie. It could be going out for dinner. It could be going out for a walk in the park. It could be something casual or it could be something more formal. I don't, I don't necessarily mean being romantic with yourself. That's a different level of preparation. But by treating yourself with more respect, dignity, and care, you start to generate that resource place inside yourself. And the more you do these things for yourself, your own self-support systems get stronger which make you more reliant upon who you are and trusting who you are, which again makes you more attractive in the world. There's another piece in there, what was that? You'll come back to me in a second. Oh yes, this is, okay. <laughs> yes, well, my broadcasts do this, I, I don't have a script or, or a bullet points or a list of anything to talk about, just what comes through comes through. Um, The term selfish has been looked upon for a lot of people as a negative term. Because when you're being selfish, there's a sense of being um, egotistical. I want to change the framing, frankly, because if you are being truly selfish, self-centric, self-supportive, as in lowering the folks from here down to your heart, that form of being selfish is a profoundly powerful way of living life from a healthy place. And again, being single, it really works because you can be single focused. If you're in a relationship, this works too. But having yourself focused towards loving yourself first puts you in a place where you can contribute to every relationship, not just a primary relationship, not your prospective relationship, but every relationship from an easier place of flow and grace. And I'm hammering this point home, but I want to make sure you get this point that one of the biggest things we think is that we need somebody else to make us feel better or that we'll get love by, from somebody else. That's only a byproduct of you loving yourself first and giving love to them. So it starts inside, goes out, and then gets reflected back, not the other way around. So I hope this has given you a chance to reframe and shift your paradigm about relationships because the reality of um, life is it's sourced inside first. Kind of a spiritual teaching, I guess. Okay, that's the way it is. I um, hope this has made sense. And, and I am going to put some things in the comments because I tend to do that, some links. And I'm going to put in the link, particularly the self-love practice, because if this is something new to you or you want to get practice more effectively at learning how to be self-supportive, self-appreciating, self-loving, I created a, a guided self-love meditation. Yes, I've got, two, I've got two guided meditations and a workbook, or a guidebook rather, that will help you learn to love yourself more effectively. And it's done very easily. With, it's done in the morning, the evening, set you up for success. I'll put it in the comments, the link for that, so you can have that. If you want more hands-on guidance, I'll also put a link in there for a discovery session with me.
chance for us to sit and talk or have a conversation rather by phone or by, by, by um, video so that we can get to see where you are and where you want to go and learn how to open up that, um, that faucet of love for yourself so you can be effective, more effective loving people out in the world and attracting a healthy relationship. And that's about it. Um, I think that's really what I wanted to say. That just a reminder, first of all, that self-love is a key. And if you're single, absolutely turning the focus, turning the tables and put it on yourself, not on somebody else, so you can be whole and healthy and not need anybody else. It's a way of freedom that you may not have discovered before, but hopefully it's been of help to you. Um, for my replay, so you can know where to find me. This is my daily Facebook Live. goes live at 5 p.m. Pacific time, pretty much every day. Of the, well, it goes every day of the week, usually 5 p.m. Pacific time. Sometimes it moves if I'm doing other events. Um, and that's on my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby at 5 p.m. Pacific time. The replays go onto my business page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. We can like my page and you can watch all the broadcasts there. In addition, I put them onto my YouTube channel because some people like YouTube more than I like Facebook Lives. That's their choice. Only replays, though. Um, my YouTube channel is my name, Barry Selby, or my social media is my name, Barry Selby. And there's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine. Oh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> I want to build up my subscriber list. It's tiny right now. But anyway, my YouTube channel is Barry Selby. The playlist on there is Messages from the Masculine. You can, you can watch all my videos there. And finally, I have a podcast which I'm slowly adding videos to, actually audios to rather, the audio versions of my earlier broadcasts, which you can find on uh, iTunes under Messages from the Masculine. Subscribe to that. You can get the audio tracks and listen to those whenever you want. I invite your, co your comments, questions, and thoughts about this because self-love is a powerful and um, requires, I say required. It's definitely a beneficial tool. And if you're not loving yourself enough yet, turn up the juice, turn up the volume. Um, if you have any questions, comments, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. And I do invite you to take care of yourself better and better than you've ever done before. Self-love, self-care, self-appreciation is my recommendation. It's my prescription for your improved living enjoyment of being single and when you have a relationship as well. With that, I thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you again soon. Bye.